All right, guys. Welcome to our Wellness Wednesday. I'm Angel Falk, the Fitness Angel, and I am here to share with you guys my story. Um, it's going to be a little bit different from normal Wellness Wednesdays because it's my 11-year brain tumor surgery anniversary. And I am going to just share a lot about that because to me, it's healing to myself and it's good to remember why you do what you do. You know, it's good to remember. So if you're not muted out, please just mute yourself. It's in the lower left corner, the little microphone. That way we don't have as too much background noise because you're going to have some just for my house right now because I'm getting carpet installed <laughs> in the upstairs. So I'm trying to hide down here. So anyway, guys, um, I'm going to share my story of my brain tumor. And that is what really started my health journey. I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, was cheerleader, dancer, loved all that stuff. I tried sports but I was not a sports person, okay? <laughs> if the ball was coming to me, I would run. But if you put on some music and give me some pom-poms, I'm in, okay? So that was kind of me and my background. Um, and then I'll jump right into, you know, being an adult, um, teaching fitness classes. I actually was a school teacher. That's my, my education degree there. I put that to use for five years and taught elementary school and then had my kids of course and wanted to be a stay-at-home mommy and that's what i got to do and i'm so thankful and so blessed and i was really feeling great just doing great exercising all the time teaching you know five to ten classes a week just off and on throughout the years i always made my classes fit whatever my life was at the time which was convenient um and it was a great way to make friends and all of that good stuff. But in 2006, I started noticing hearing loss in my right ear. And I thought, oh no, all that loud music is starting to have its effects because you know there's danger when you listen to loud music all the time, you can go deaf. Mm -hmm. So I went and had a hearing test, an ear, nose and throat doctor. And he told me, um, I don't think it's that because then you would have hearing loss on both ears. Um, but he said, it's not severe. Let's do a wait and see. Let's wait and see what happens. Keep an eye on it. And y'all, I don't like that now. I look back and I wish I could have said, no, wait a minute. There's a problem. I need to find out what it is. Let's do a little more digging. And I tell people that all the time. You are your health advocate. It's you. It's your health. Nobody's going to care about your health as much as you. Right? So you've got to own it. And I just want to get that loud and clear. And if you're a parent, you have to be your child's advocate. You have to be on top of it. You can't depend on somebody else, even if it's a doctor. So anyway, that was what started. And y'all, I was not a good advocate for myself. I put things off. My family started noticing, you can't ever hear. You have to talk on the phone on your other ear. You're always saying, what, huh? Um, I did not go back and then one night I was in my bed asleep and I woke up to a crunching noise in 2009, in July of 2009. I heard like paper crunching and then I was completely deaf. I could hear nothing. So the next morning I go to my um, doctor, my regular doctor, and they could not see anything in my ear. I said, go back to the ear, nose and throat doctor. I'll go back to him. And he says, okay, there's something serious here. I don't know what it is, but you're going to have to have an MRI. And it just so happened the next day, we were already going to California to visit family <laughs> for a week. And I was like, do I need to cancel my trip? And he said, no, just go on your trip. When you get back, we'll have it all scheduled for you. So I'm out there in California knowing something seriously is wrong with me. Um, but I enjoyed my time, came home, got my MRI. And guys, it was scary going in because all on the walls were brain tumor posters, right? Um, I get the MRI and when I'm done, I ask the technician, can you tell me what it is? And you know, they're not allowed to tell you anything. You have to wait till you go to the doctor. But guys, it was a Friday afternoon at like 4.30. And I guess he felt like 
he just wanted to to tell me but he couldn't tell me but he showed me the scan on the left side perfectly normal healthy brain on the right side my brain which should have been like that it was mashed up to about that big because this tumor was down here and I said do I have a brain tumor do I have a brain tumor oh my god and he he just looked at me and shook his head he said I'll give you this but I can't tell you anything so I go sit in my car guys it's a Friday afternoon I'm in my car in the parking lot by myself and Caddy Corner is another building, and that's where the ear, nose, and throat doctor would be. And I was like, it's Friday afternoon. I can't go. I can't find out anything. I'm scared, you know. I'm just scared, and I just pray, God, help me. And I go home. My husband's a pharmacist. At this time, he was working at CVS till 10 o'clock at night. Terrible hours. Anyway, I called him. I was like, I have a brain tumor. <laughs> and when he came home, he had the little disc and it's so hard to read. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to read this disc. Anybody in here ever seen those things? It's like chop, 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 but he's very smart. I'm thankful I have married a smart pharmacist husband and he figured it out, what it was, was doing all the research, how is this treatable and y'all, it's life threatening. It was scary. This was the worst possible location to have a tumor. So, we did our research. Um, we ended up getting a doctor referral, of course, um, to a, um, he specializes in acoustic neuroma tumors and hearing loss. So I go to him, he's supposed to be one of the best. And guys, when he started talking, he was great. You know, we were scared and he was saying, stand on one foot. How do you do, how do you teach classes? How do you have ballots? because it didn't make sense for what my brain, the trauma that my brain was going through. I didn't even know it. The only symptom I had was hearing loss. And anyway, I was doing all the yoga poses and whatnot, and he was amazed. And then he started telling me about the tumor. He said the tumor, he started doing his fingers like this. He said, it's like a game of pickup sticks. It's, it has tails that are intertwined in your brain stem. And those nerves are what keep you alive. And we have to be so careful. It's such a delicate surgery that if we hit the wrong thing, you could die. But guys, when he was doing his fingers like this, can y'all see that? He was missing fingers. He literally was missing like three fingers. And I was thinking in my mind, how could he do brain surgery? And it was like hearing Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, wah, wah. I heard nothing else. It was it was awful. It was so scary. And then, you know, he said his spill and he left and then his nurse came in. I said, how could he be a brain surgeon with no fingers? And she told me he was born that way. His name's Dr. David Haynes. He's very famous. He was born that way and determined he would be a surgeon. And people told him he'd never be a surgeon, but he was determined. And now he is like top dog and all these other people are under him. So I'll just trust it. I was like, okay, God, I'm just trusting. Well, then after doing more research, he said, this is going to be very intensive and I'm going to have to have another surgeon with me. So he was at one hospital and then he said he wanted Dr. Reed Thompson, who's the head of neurosurgery at Vanderbilt. So it started getting more complicated. So then I went to see Dr. Um, Thompson and he said, what you have is actually called a meningioma. It has tails on it and those tails are intertwining your brainstem, the nerves. So he said, the, you know, this is the worst possible location. You could have a tumor. But the good news is, is it was benign. He, he felt 99% sure and they would test it later. But he said, we still have to treat it. It's life threatening. If we don't do something, you'll die. You'll die in your sleep, but it will cut off everything. Um, so he told me I had three months to prepare because it was very intensive and my life would not be normal for another year and a half probably. I would not be able to teach classes. I would not be able to homeschool. All those things. And I just cried remembering hearing that. But guys, I um, the good news is <laughs> I had my surgery and I came back much faster than that. But I wanted to go into a little bit about the three months before I had my surgery, I had time to plan out my life because I was, you know, we didn't know what to expect. But guys, it just so happened, I was in a Bible study on faith. We were studying the book of Hebrews. And guys, I, I'm telling you now, you need community. You need a group of 
people who will believe with you and pray with you and stand with you. And if you don't have that, I just want to encourage you to get that because that group meant so much to me. And there was one special time we were at the um, altar praying and worshiping. And this is before my surgery, of course. I knew what was going on. And the song was called Healer by Carrie Job. Do y'all know that song? Anybody? If you don't know that song, look it up. It's powerful. And that was just my song. I had been claiming it. You are my healer. And when I was at that altar praying and worshiping, I felt the Lord give me two promises, guys. I just felt that voice. You know, when he's close, you hear that whisper. Stay close to God and you'll hear his whisper. But he said, your faith has made you whole. And then you will be pleasantly surprised. And y'all, I write everything down. I've got, in my Bible, I write these things down because I never want to forget. I knew my faith had made me whole, but I did not know pleasantly surprised. What does that mean? Does that mean I wake up in heaven? Because I learned early on in my faith journey, we're always healed either before you go through the fire, God prevents things you don't even know, or two, you go through the fire, you go through the surgery, the chemo, the radiation, God heals you, or three, you're healed straight into the arms of Jesus. But I believe he always heals you. So I was like, okay, God, I don't know what that means, but I'm taking it. And guys, the community was just so good to me. Um, I still was able to teach my classes. And y'all, my fitness classes are like my therapy. It is like my mental health. That's how I get rid of stress. That's my friends. That's, that's everything. So my classes were very special to me at that time. I was teaching Zumba and my night class. I remember teaching my last Zumba class before my surgery. Guys, I start crying. <laughs> but, um, you know, you just never know. Is this the last one? I didn't know. So one of my neighbors who takes my class, her name's Shannon. She showed up with a tripod and a camera. She's like, we're going to video. And y'all, that was the first time I'd ever videoed my class. And y'all know me now. I video a lot of classes. I love making videos. And anyway, I just look back at that and think, wow, you know, that was God. And later, I'll tell you, I took that video to my physical therapist and I said, this is what I have to do again. So that's another story. But that was the first one. And guys, I want to tell you about the surgery. Um, the morning of the surgery, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post this morning, but I mentioned something in there that I never really talk about publicly, and that is seeing an angel. But I'm going to tell you that story now, because you know what? I figured I'm not getting any younger. It's my story, and I want to share it. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you. So guys, I had to be there at like 6 a.m. You know when you get surgery, you got to be there really early. Um, it was me and my husband and my best friend Edie Ross was there and um, his life, our life group leaders, Doug Biden was the guy that was with him. So we were there and everybody in the waiting room, there was probably like five or six families and they all had their pillow and their suitcase, you know, and a few family members there. We were all in the same boat basically. So we're all there and we're praying and, you know, filling out the paperwork and praying and this girl comes in and she has on a black hoodie and she's by herself and she has no suitcase, no purse, no pillow, nothing. And she sits down kind of close to us and she puts her hoodie up and she's just like this. And y'all, she looked just exactly like one of my best friends named Leah Walls who had passed away. And I didn't really think much of it then. I just thought it was kind of odd that she looked so much like Leah. She had nothing with her. And right before I had to go back, we stood up and we were praying in a circle, holding hands, me and Wade and Edie and Doug Biden. And she came up and got behind us and prayed with us. Is that not crazy? And then we open our eyes and she's gone, gone. I'm like, God, was that an angel? Or did you let my friend Leah zoom down here and zoom, okay, come down here and pray with us and leave? I don't know. I don't understand. But there's something supernatural about that. And I just want to tell you, I believe in the supernatural. I believe in Jesus. 
I know that God has angels around us, warring for us and fighting for us, even if we may not see it. They are there. And I just felt like that was a gift from God. So I just had to throw that out there because I don't always share that pub publicly, but I wanted to today. Maybe that's for somebody on this call. Maybe that's for somebody that listens to this later. I don't know. But it was amazing. And then when I got up there, um, I prayed with everybody. I was like, can I pray with you? My nurses, my doctors, everybody I prayed with. And I just want to remind all of you, be bold. You know, people tell me that sometimes. I like the way when you say you're going to pray, you do it right then and there. You don't wait till you go home. And I say do it now because you might forget later. And you never know when that prayer needs to be told because I believe God hears every prayer. He sees Every tear, I mean, the word says he holds every tear in a bottle. Every tear matters. Everything you pray matters. Everything you say matters. Everything you share matters. So I just want to encourage you in that. Um, and then my surgery was 14 hours long. And Dr. Thompson and Dr. Haynes had to tag team and take turns. And my husband was there the whole time, of course. And people would come and go. People would come and go, friends would come and go and pray. Um, and so many amazing things happened. Two different women that were in my life, they're both in ministry, came and prayed and they met each other during my surgery. And now they have a prison ministry. They have a strip club ministry. They have, they came together through all of that. And I just want to remind you too, God works all things together for good to those that love him or, and are called according to his purpose. That was just one of the many blessings that came out of this. And it was all for his, um, for his glory. And it was, it was about Jesus. It wasn't about me, but I'm so glad because of my surgery, they met and it's amazing. Um, and my kids were nine and 12 at the time. And Ethan, my nine year old, I remember him saying, mom, will you dream during surgery? And I said, I don't know. If God wants me to dream, I'm going to dream. And I'm excited for it if it happens. So guys, when I woke up from my surgery, they were shaking me. I had my head like this because it was right back here. I have a big scar there. And I was shaved. And they had to shave my head. Not the whole thing, just this big patch. But they woke me up. And I thought, I'm dreaming. Don't wake me up. Oh, yeah, I had brain surgery. Oh, I'm alive. Okay, this is good. So I'm thinking all that in my head. I could think perfectly clearly everything I could hear. I knew what was going on, but I was dreaming about Roman soldiers protecting me. Isn't that crazy? That was my dream. And I thought, how cool is that? So I woke up and then I went back to sleep. And then when I woke up again, I was in ICU and it felt like I had lots of doctors and nurses and my husband was there and it felt like a crowded room and it felt like I was falling out of the bed. It's just, it was a terrible feeling. I'm just, I felt like I was falling out of bed, um, very dizzy, and I was hot. I was like so hot, and they had blankets stacked up on me up to here, and I was intubated. So I had that thing down my throat. I was trying to pull it out. I remember pulling it out. Wade and I were talking about it earlier, and he didn't remember how it happened. But I remember trying to say, I'm hot, I'm hot. And they were all like cheering for me you know, cheering that I was up and, and trying to make conversation, but I couldn't talk. I couldn't get anything out. And um, I thought to be brain surgeons, they're not very smart to know I'm freaking hot. They need to get these blankets off of me. And I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. And so Wade got my hand and got a little pencil and they were, they were like, she's trying to talk. She's trying to talk. And I could hear all this. And it was so frustrating to not be able to get it, the words out. And so here's another lesson. I believe when people are laying there and you don't know they understand what you're saying, they hear you. They hear you. If whoever you're visiting in the hospital, they can't respond, keep talking, keep sharing, because I believe they hear you. You never know. So I got that little pencil and I was trying to write the word hot and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was so hard. And I thought, this is what it's like to not be able to write, you know, and it just made me, my heart more compassionate for those that can't do things. And anyway, I finally scribbled somehow the word hot and Wade goes, she's hot, she's hot. And they all started cheering. 
And um, my best friend Edie goes, yes, yeah, she's hot. It, it was just crazy fun. But I was like, oh, okay, now get the blankets off, finally. So finally they did, and I was so relieved. But that was my first, um, first experience I remember waking up like that. And then I want to fast forward. I was in ICU for three days. They told me they've never seen anybody with such a healthy heart. And I think it's from all the working out, all the exercise. So being fit matters. Um, but I remember them telling me I was going to have to go live in a rehab hospital because I couldn't walk. And I was so like devastated and sad. And my, um, Dr. Reed Thompson came into the room and he said, you just had brain surgery. Don't listen to them. You're going to be walking. It's okay. And I remember hearing that and it sparked my faith. And another lesson here is speak life, speak faith, speak belief. Guys, that meant a lot to me and it made me want to do it even more. And so I remember walking the hall for the first time with a walker and it was so exciting. Um, and then I remember fast forward my face looking a little different and I didn't know it. I hadn't seen a mirror yet, but I remember somebody told me somehow, um, the doctors, I'm sure that I was probably going to lose this nerve. Um, it had been stretched out severely, the facial nerve, um, because of the tumor. And when they took, they couldn't get all the tumor out, by the way, but when they got all that they could out, the, the nerve just collapsed. But they tested it and they said it should come back. You'll, you'll be looking normal again no time soon. Well, it, it never came back, guys. But anyway, so before I looked in the mirror, I remember being able to go to the bathroom by myself for the first time here in the hospital room. And I was kind of bracing myself to look in the mirror because I didn't know what to expect. And I had never met anybody with facial paralysis before. So when I'm walking into the bathroom, I was just kind of preparing myself. And before I opened my eyes, or before I looked in the mirror, because I couldn't close this eye, it was popped open like a uh, robot. It looked like the Terminator, honestly. Um, but I remember before I looked in the mirror, I said to myself, um, okay, God, we're, we're fixing to go on a journey. And I looked and I remember getting tears in my good eye because this eye didn't have tears. And I just remember thinking, yep, we're on a journey together, God. And you know what? I had built my faith. When you come to receive Christ, that is not the ending. That's the beginning. And I had already been through some stuff with Jesus. And I knew I had expectancy. We were going on another journey and he was going to take my faith to a new level. I just knew it. And so I was really okay with it. But guys, having the facial paralysis was hard. Not only um, just not being able to talk, the drool constantly, the do I wear makeup? Do I not wear makeup? Just weird stuff. Um, of course, my eye was in a lot of pain and um, from the dryness and we got a bubble. They gave me the, I saved it. I have one bubble. I wore this thing for a long, 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 long time. And then when I ran out and it quit sticking, my husband had to create a medical account to order these things online. It was crazy. So that's one thing I wish they would change is give these things out, <laughs> sell these things in Walmart, something, but this really saved my life, y'all. My eye was so in so much pain and you have to protect your eye because it can get scratched and then you could go blind. So that was another thing I had to worry about, but I had physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, facial therapy. I had it all. And I remember going through all this and thinking how hard it was, but I was just so grateful to be alive guys. And, um, just so grateful for my children and my husband and thankful for the community around me. It meant so much, but anyway, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Um, the eye bubble. Oh, it, this, you know, my surgery was on October 21. So that's 10 days before Halloween, right? And my son said, mom, my only prayer is that you can take me trick-or-treating down our street and back. I want you to be able to do that. Well, he's of course with his friends trick-or-treating and not really wanted to, but my husband was able to walk me down the street and back. So I was so grateful guys that I got to do that. But 
we did that. We walked down the street and back and I'm sitting on the porch giving out candy and the kids are coming and y'all, I really did look scary, but I'll never forget a little girl saw me and screamed. She thought I was dressed up like a scary monster and it hurt my heart so bad. I went inside and just turned on E.T. E.T. is my favorite movie. So I'm watching E.T. just thinking how broken hearted I felt because I looked so horrible and it was really scary but I knew I would make it through and I finally started driving again and I remember going to Target for the first time and the lady in line thought I had special needs and um, you could tell by the way she talked to me kind of baby talked to me and I thought oh my gosh she thinks I'm you know mentally handicapped and it was just another horrible feeling. And that kind of, I think, sparked my love for Down syndrome because I have a buddy in my Zumba class named Scotty. I'm going to cry again. But he has Down syndrome. And guys, I never, ever want to talk that way to him or anybody like that. And it really was a wake-up call that everyone should be treated, you know, with love and respect. And it's just, you learn so many lessons just going through the day-to-day -day things. Um, but that was important to me. But the good news is I was back in the gym at six weeks. I, I couldn't drive, so Wade drove me. But I remember being in the gym. I know I said I was driving to Target. That must have happened later. But <laughs> anyway, I was in the gym standing up, leaning against the wall with my dumbbells because I was, like, determined to work out. It just is my therapy. And then at eight weeks, I was teaching spin, which is when you're on a bicycle. And I was holding on for dear life, like, oh, my God, don't let me fall off. And then I was teaching my weights classes. And then at 12 weeks, I got invited to teach at a special event for brain injury patients. And I remember the little girl, we had a poster of her with her helmet on and everything for her brain injury. And I remember dancing to that song, Shackles. Y'all know that song? Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. And I remember praising Jesus and everybody looking at me like I was crazy because my face was hanging with the facial paralysis. It's much better now. But I remember thinking, I don't care. I'm going to praise him. I don't care what I look like. I'm going to praise him. And it really did spark my heart to want to make my fitness classes more of a ministry. And that's how I started fit to praise. I want to be fit so I can praise God. And it made me appreciate when I can work out. And when people say they don't want to work out and all that, I'm like, but you get to, you get to. So I tell people, do what you can do. If you can't, what is that saying? If you can't fly, run if you can't run walk if you can't walk crawl do what you can do just had to share that um so anyway i started getting better and then one year later i had my mri for my checkup right and they told me they couldn't get it all but it should not grow because they sealed it off it won't get oxygen you know it won't get won't have life um well it had grown a lot and my heart sank. And I was like, after all that, I can't go through that again. I mean, just tears. And my doctor, Dr. Thompson is the one I was meeting with. He said, no, I can't go through that either. <laughs> so he said, you're going to have radiation. That's what I suggest. That's what I would do if it was my wife. And um, so that's what we did, guys. I had 27 treatments. It was supposed to be 30, but he said 27 would do it because I had a Boy Scout trip planned. Um, and anyway, I did really well throughout the radiation. If you want to see, this is my other visual here. I had to have this mask made and, um, this is what they had to make and I kept it. I'm going to keep it forever, but they see these little screw holes. They had to lay me on a table and screw me into the table so I could not move. And I had to do that 27 times. And each time they had the radio going, and it was always some pop song. And I remember the first one was Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. <laughs> I'm really driven by music. Music is important to me. So the whole time I was just praying that, Lord, kill it, hit it, whatever you got to do. Um, but that was quite an experience. And I did really well throughout it. But I want to tell y'all, when it was... Um, over um at the end is when i got sick i mean really sick like in the bed fever chills for a, maybe two weeks 
I, I should have timeline that, but I remember I lost a lot of weight. I had spots all over my face. They said, your teeth may fall out. I was worried it hurt the facial nerve even more. Um, all of these horrible, devastating things, y'all, there's always side effects. If you take medicine, if you get the surgery, whatever, your body is stressed and it caused so much. And I remember looking at my belly when I was going to the bathroom thinking, I'm skinny, but it's ugly. It was like loose skin. And I just knew I don't want to be skinny. I want to be healthy. And that was kind of when my mind took a shift from going to always wanting to be skinny, always wanting to be skinny to wanting to be healthy. And so that's kind of when I started my um, health mindedness, my mind shift, wanting to know what am I doing wrong? I'm working out all the time. I thought that was it. But guys, that's not the answer. And so after a month, I had to, after my finished all my, um, radiation treatments. I had to go after a month to have another MRI. And they said, we don't believe this. We don't understand this, but it's grown again. And there, it must be, maybe it's swelling or inflammation. Cause usually by a month it's gone back down, but we were just like, Oh my gosh, God, really? You know, we'd always prayed. We'd always trusted. We always had faith, but you just never know. You never know what could happen. So again, um, just leaning on God and one of my good friends, Barbara Ann Jeter, if she wasn't that close of a friend back then, we just knew each other from church. She contacted me and said, Angel, I want to start a prayer chain for you. Tell me your best friends. And I told her and y'all, they prayed for me every three hours. They set their alarm clocks midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m. I'm telling you, these are real friends. And they prayed for me and a month later it had stopped growing so praise the lord and i started doing my research how do you how are you live a healthy life what is health and y'all everything pointed to more fruits and vegetables really every doctor out there no matter what his philosophy was he they all agreed you need more plant foods cuz plant foods have antioxidants and antioxidants are what help you fight cancer and disease and whatnot. And anyway, I started doing my research and we started trying to add more and we did add more, um, but we were still drinking diet Cokes and getting a lot of McDonald's happy meals, you know, um, those types of things. But gradually we started changing our diet, our family. And then I met a nurse and she told me about juice plus. And so we started adding juice plus to our diet. It's, fruits and vegetables that are juiced. They take the water and the sugar out and they put it in a gummy. Kids eat the gummies or adults. And um, I got the capsules and my daughter got the gummies for free. And that's how I started. Cause the number one thing I did not want was my children to ever have to go through this. And I heard a doctor talk about it. It made sense. Finally, my husband's a pharmacist. He's very skeptical. You've probably never seen him on screen. He doesn't like to talk in front of people. He's the science, the nerd. I love him to death. Opposites attract. But guys, he did his, you know, did the research. And now he, of course, takes it. And we got our son on it. Of course, the whole family. Both of my kids did the Healthy Starts program. And if you don't know about that, when an adult orders, you get a child the free fruit and veggies gummies or the capsules um, and now they even get a free bag of our complete protein powder is 15 servings and guys we have a we have um, a lot of research 41 peer-reviewed journals um, the most researched nutritional product in the world and one of the studies is about cancer patients and I love it so much because they took women who had ovarian cancer and they, they had two groups. Anyway, I won't go into all the science. If you want that, we have a great video recapping it, or you can actually see the journal that it's in. Just let me know or whoever invited you to this call. But it showed when you add Juice Plus in the complete, that it increases your protein levels in your blood. It increases your antioxidant levels in your blood. And y'all, most people who have cancer, um, they die from the treatments. I mean, I hate to say it, but they're not getting the nutritional support. 
And the older you get, the more antioxidants, the more plant foods you need. If you're over 50, raise your hand if you're over 50. Who in this group? Yeah, you're supposed to be getting 20 servings of fruits and vegetables every day to offset all the toxins and everything else we're getting in our body. Isn't that amazing? So I just knew I needed more and I added that. And since then, guys, I, um, I have a group on Facebook with hundreds and hundreds of people that um, most of them are taking juice plus most of uh, some of them are not and that's fine we want to meet people where they are and we want to help people and that's what this is all about and y'all I just get teary thinking about it because y'all do y'all see this little necklace I got this from juice plus it's Tiffany's I got this from juice plus yesterday in the mail and I was so excited I didn't even know that I had gotten in the top 50 for introducing people to our Add More Good campaign. That is when the kids get free gummies and they get the free bag of protein powder. I didn't even know I was in the top 50 and I got this and here's the card. I told Maria last night on the team call, oh, it's got an eye bubble stuck to it, okay. <laughs> here's the sweet card I got. It says, congratulations on adding more good to so many families. Cheers, the Juice Plus company. And y'all, it's, it's more than just fruits and vegetables in a capsule, guys. This community, has helped me so much, I won't cry, but I didn't know much about nutrition. I didn't know much about healthy living. And this community has just come around me. We have, what, over 15,000 doctors recommending this product. So I'm always listening, I'm always learning, and then I just wanna share it. That's the way I am. I hear it, I learn it, and I wanna share it. And I just wanna encourage you all to be like that, you know? And I'm sure I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, I've probably said the wrong thing a few times, but I'm trying. I'm just gonna do my best and I'm gonna be me and I wanna encourage you to be you. And I used to teach lots of fitness classes. I had a studio, I rented space. I had to constantly be begging people, come to dance with me, come work out with me. And I made t-shirts all the time and all that. And since then, God is showing me to spend more of my time in the Juice Plus community and in that side of my world because of course, they pay me really well when I share with people, but also I'm changing lives. I'm changing children's lives. I'm changing destinies. Somebody, if you don't know anything about epigenetics, we have a video on that we can share with you. But if you're born with a gene to have cancer, you can turn it on or turn it off. And when you take Juice Plus and, and add these antioxidants from the plant foods, you are turning off some bad genes. We have studies to prove it. <laughs> so I'm so excited about that. And I just wanna share with everybody that there is hope. And I said on my Facebook post, if anybody wants prayer, I am here to pray for you. I'm gonna close this out in a prayer. And I want to encourage you, um, if you need prayer, I want you just to raise your hand. If you need prayer today, if you have somebody who needs prayer, will you raise your hand? You can unmute yourself too. Mary, Barbara, Vivian, okay, is that Brenda? You don't have your name on there, but I can see you. Okay, all right, unmute yourself and um, just tell me really quickly how to pray. Barbara, you start. Um, for my mother who's suffering from scleroderma, which is an autoimmune disease. Okay, Barb's mom. Mary, how about you? Did she leave? I saw her hand up. Okay, I said, raise your hand and tell me, and she left. <laughs> I know I scare a lot of people away. Okay, Brenda. I also need prayer for my mom. Um, she will, her leg is not healing, left leg, and um, she's oozing, and we talked yesterday about um, putting her in assisted living. Okay. She's currently in health care, which is higher acuity of care, but she was independent and she, she's a very independent woman. Right. So losing this is. I'll be praying you know. for her mine too. Absolutely. We talked, so I know. Cheryl, yeah. did you raise your hand too? Tell me. Oh, you're muted. Hey there, sorry, I'm trying not to be a blubbery mess. That's the first time I've really heard your story full out and I'm just, I've got like snotted tissues. And oh, 
Bless your heart. I just love you. I can't wait to go to conference and give you a hug. Um, my husband's back's acting up. If you could add him into some prayers and then, um, you know, Bella's doing much better, but if you could just continue to pray, you know, for her anxiety. Yeah. Okay. I've got you. All right, Cheryl Hayes, did you raise your hand too? No. Anybody else? Vivian, tell me how to pray for you. Oh, you're muted. Okay. There you go. I have been having some back issues. It's been going on for a few weeks now, and um, it's down in the lower back and uh, maybe in the middle of my back, I have a little stenosis in there and uh, it's kind of sore. And so I will just pray, ask me, pray that it completely heals and Amen. I can get back to doing what I need to be doing. Yes. <laughs> and all the ministry activities I've got going on. Yes, you are busy. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I love you. I love you. Is there anybody else who wants prayer? All right. Oh, I think I saw a chat. Let's see. I'm not good at reading the chats because I get too sidetracked. Let's see. Lisa. Yes. Deb. Rectal. Okay. I got it. All right. All right. All right. Let's pray. Lord, right now, I thank you for my story. I thank you that I'm here today. I thank you that you have a plan and purpose, not just for me, for every person on this call, God. I pray we would all walk in just that peace and that joy, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you love us, knowing that our days are numbered, but you have a plan and a purpose for each and every day. I pray we'll take every little block of 24 hours that you give us and live it to the fullest, to praise you, to glorify you, to, to love the people around us, God. Help us to love and share and be kind and speak truth. And just to be your light, Lord, to be a light, to shine, God. And I lift up all these needs. I pray for Barb's mom, Father God, for this autoimmune disorder. I pray, God, as she is changing her diet and have Barbara, how blessed she is to have a daughter who's a holistic nutritionist in her life. I pray, God, that you would help her make any changes she needs to make to correct this disorder in the name of Jesus. And Father God, for Brenda's mom, for her leg to be healed, God, heal it, we ask in the name of Jesus. And I pray for her as she's having to transition into this new living environment, God, that you take away the fear and the worry and the disappointment, God. Let her just pour her heart out to you, God. I pray that, Father, in your holy name. And for Cheryl, God, for her husband's back, I pray you touch his back. I pray you bring healing to his back. I thank you, God, for Bella that you are healing her from this anxiety, Father God. I thank you for her little dog that's bringing her comfort, and I pray you work in that and continue to work in that and remind her how precious she is. And Father God, for Vivian's back, Lord, I know that you have so much work for her to do. God, so much for her to do in her church, and I just pray you bring healing in her back. I pray, God, you bring comfort. I pray, God, you bring peace and whatever she needs to do to adjust that you would work in it for her in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And for this private request, Father God, I pray for Liza that you heal her in the name of Jesus. I thank you so much for what you're doing in her in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, guys, thank y'all for staying with me. I went longer than normal, but I appreciate you all so much. Thanks for listening. And I did record it. So if you have anybody who wants a recording, just let me know. Love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Angel.